Good morning. Good morning. Hey, this is uh, Donovan Darius welcoming you guys on to my morning inspiration. Uh, come on in here. want to welcome you this morning, whether you're on your way to work, on your way to school, if you're just chilling around the house, if you're done work, if you got one of those evening jobs and you work in the evening, and welcome this morning. Uh, this morning, morning inspiration. We're going to talk about finding your security and your confidence in the Lord. Okay, so welcome to everybody who got a chance to come on again. Chime in, uh, send me a thumbs up, a heart or something. Let me know you're here so I can give you a shout out. Good morning, Miss Sonia. Good morning, Derek. Uh, as you guys come on this morning, Miss Tina, good morning as well. Hope all is well. Glad to see you guys. Hope all is well. Hope your summer is going according to plan. Uh, that you're not too hot, but you're staying cool enough. But again, today, again, our morning inspiration. I want to come to you this morning. Yesterday, if you missed yesterday, I actually uploaded it on YouTube. So definitely check out yesterday's message. It was talking about, it was talking about growing your relationship. Okay, growing your relationship, you know what I'm saying, with God. How do you grow it? How do you deepen it? Okay, and so again, if you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. Today's message is going to be a short one. I'm just going to share some different principles and just a couple examples, just some insight. Again, as I always, I always say, I'll never tell you what to think. I'll never tell you what to do. I'll never tell you what to believe, but I'll give you a perspective. And hopefully that perspective adds light to what you already know what you believe, what you think, and what you will do to give your life, you know what I'm saying, a boost and help take you to the next level. And so this morning inspiration is talking about, is basically talking about how do we find our confidence and our strength in the Lord, okay? And so I'm going to be reading from one passage of scripture, okay, in the Bible, and it's going to basically be from, from Psalms 20, 27, verse 1, all right? Do me a favor before you get going, okay? If you haven't, definitely go ahead and I'll share this so other people can get access to it as well. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Tina, for sharing it this morning. Thank you, Edward, as, as well. Tim, uh, thank you guys for joining as well. All right, so here we go. Psalms 27, verse 1, okay? We're talking about finding our confidence and security in the Lord, okay? What does that mean? Here's the problem. Here's the thing. We live in a world where there's so much insecurity, Everywhere you turn around, there's there's rumors of wars, there's rumors of, of, of terrorists, there's there's administration stuff, there's things on your job, you go to the movies, you go to the school, you do all this stuff and sometimes you can find yourself walking around in fear. You can find yourself walking around with the mindset, with the clear visual image in your mind of what's going to happen that doesn't benefit you. Okay, you send your children out to school for a lot of for a lot of African Americans, okay, like myself. Okay, parents, I, I hear it all the time. They send their kids out to school, or they have teenagers, they have ones in college, and they're fearing the fact that hey, my kid may be out there. What if they get stopped by police? Okay, in in the culture we live in, okay, it may not be just like in the NFL. Not everybody's a bad person, not everybody does wrong, but sometimes when you're living in uncertainty and, and fear. It doesn't, you, we tend to look at the little part. We tend to look at the, the, the smallest amount and it tends to be our biggest amount. Basically means this, in the NFL, one person, two people, three people do something bad, the whole NFL gets, you know, the whole NFL gets blamed and basically gets labeled. Same thing with our police force. Listen, I love police. I thank you for your job. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for all that you do. One guy, two guys, three guys do bad things, okay? All right, then everybody gets the bad rap. And so just understand this. We don't have to walk around with that perspective, with that perception. We don't have to walk around with a blanket coverage. But how many of you guys know sometimes that happened in our life? You're on a job. One person gets fired or two people get fired. All of a sudden, you can envision yourself getting fired. When you walk in the door, you can almost imagine something happening to you. You can almost imagine you getting called to the office or something negative happening. And so again, so just understand that we live in a time, okay? And this time is not many so much unusual than any other time. Everybody deals with situations. Everybody deals with things that bring that can bring about fear. Everybody deals with things that can bring about uncertainty. Everybody does it. But what do you do when you're going through those moments? What do you do when you don't know? What do you do when you tried everything you know and then you still find up short? You still find yourself being anxious. You have those feelings, okay? You have the butterflies on the inside, but your mind is running, is racing 100 miles in a minute. You're trying to do deep, deep breaths, but nothing's slowing it down. What do you do when that happens? What do you do when you look in a situation that seems hopeless to you, okay, no, despite how much you try? Well, then, well, if that's where you're at, if you experience that, if you know somebody who has, then today I'm going to share with you just a quick message that's going to help you. 
okay? That's going to help you as you're walking through your life, okay? And it's found in Psalms 27, verses, verse 1, okay? There's many scriptures, but I'm just going to pick this one this morning. And we'll just share from it, okay? It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who should I fear or who should I be afraid of? The Lord is a refuge and a stronghold of my life. Who shall I be afraid? You see, I opened up this morning and that verse spoke to me this morning because as it goes through, as it read it, I'm going to read it. And I'm going to give a little context and a little examples for our lives. So it starts out and it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Well, first of all, what is the Lord? Okay, see, we live in the United States and we're not used to the term Lord being a very everyday use term to describe someone. The only person that we a lot of times understand what a Lord does and who a Lord is, and when we think about if we're renting a home. See, if you're renting a home, you have what you call a landlord. That means that that person, that means that that person owns the land. They own the property that you are now staying in. You see, there's rights that you have as a tenant. They're called the Lord, the landlord. You're called the tenant. You are the one who's given stewardship. You're the one who's given the management over it. And so there are some rights that the landlord has and there's some rights that you have. There's some authority that the landlord has and there's some authority that you have. There are some responsibilities that the landlord has and there's some responsibility that you have as well. And so understanding that we don't, we don't use the term Lord to describe other people as much, but we can relate to it when it comes to the term landlord. Here's one of the things about a Lord and about a landlord. Number one, land, the Lord determines the ownership. Who owns this property? The Lord does. That means that he or she can determine who comes and who goes. The landlord can determine what they give you and what they take back. The landlord can determine how long of a time you're in a certain season, how long of a time you're living there. The landlord not only understands, understands this, the landlord knows and the Lord knows that he or she been there even before you got there. What does that mean and how does it benefit you? It just means that the Lord has already went before you to pave the path to make sure everything is okay before you ever came along. So number one, that means that the Lord has already been where you're trying to go. The Lord already knows what's already in front of you. The Lord already knows what you're about to face. The Lord already prepared the answer for the questions you're going to have. And so when it says the Lord is my light and my salvation, it's saying the Lord, Jesus Christ, the one who created it all, who sent, was sent to this earth, the one who was here just to make us righteous, to correct, to, to correct, to pay the penalty for everything we'll ever do wrong. Have you ever done anything wrong? Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever stole anything? Have you ever promised something to yourself or somebody else and you, and you broke the promise? Have you ever done anything? Have you ever missed the mark of perfection? If you have, if you have, then we're in need of a savior. That means we're in need of understanding this. That the God that created everything requires holiness, perfection. But none of us can do it. So what do we do? Do we beat ourselves up? Or do we allow the person who paid the price for us to be back in alignment, which is called righteousness, so we can walk out the very, the very benefit of why we're here. We can walk out the very purpose we're here. We talked about it before. If you go to the grocery store and you got all this food that you're going to eat for your cookout, and now it's time to pay, and somebody comes along and they pays it for you before you actually put your credit card on the table, then all of a sudden they pay it for you and they say, here, you know what I'm saying? Here's the money to the counter. Now you go ahead and you enjoy your food. That's what God did for us. That's what the Lord Jesus did for us. He paid the penalty price for us so we can live our lives according to the very purpose he had for us we can be what they call right standing so when it says the lord is my light and my salvation what's most important about that light you ever been in a dark place and you can't see anything that's how it is for us sometimes and i like i know for me there's times in my life that things just seem dark it seemed like i was i was blind and i could not understand where i was going what i needed to do i felt like i was in a holding pattern it felt like one day i was so confident on where i was going and then the next day it was like well where in the world do i start at you ever had one of those days if you have, do me a favor, type one. Let me know that I'm talking to the right crowd. Let me know I'm talking to the right person. See, there's going to be some times that we're going to walk through some periods of time that's going to seem dark. It can be dark in our relationship, dark in our mind, dark in our friendships, dark in our finances. It can seem dark. That means it's not prosperous. We can't see. Only thing we sometimes can see is right in front of us. It says the Lord is my light. And so the Lord comes to give us the light. He comes to be the light. He comes to ask to, to help us to understand when I don't know, I can then say, Lord, I don't know, and I need your help. You see, one of the most powerful things we can ever do is walk in humility. Humility basically says, I don't know everything, and I'm open and I'm receiving 
to I'm ready to receive the help that I need. And so it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The term salvation at its root word means to salvage something, to take from one place to the other. When it says the Lord is my salvation, it's basically saying that we were, we were in a place and, and constantly still is, even as we're watching right now, even as I'm talking, we're still in a place where we need to be saved. We need to be saved from the, the dangers of life. We need to be saved from even sometimes ourselves. How many times we ever promised ourselves something and we turned around and reneged on it, okay? Forget everybody else promising something. Forget everybody else doing something to us. How many times you do something to yourself? How many of you guys know about eating healthy? How many of you know about, you know what I'm saying, you know, managing your money, about not overspending? How many of you guys know about, you know what I'm saying, not talking about your boss behind your back and not being on Facebook while you're at your job, not doing all this other stuff? How many of you guys know that, but yet we still do things irregardless? And so if you understand that, we can understand that, wait a minute, I do need saving. I do need salvation. I do need somebody to help me, to guide me, to give me perspective that I don't quite know. Yes, congratulations, you do know a lot. Congratulations, you did graduate high in your, high in your, in your class. Congratulations, you have been battle tested. Congratulations, you are smart. I'm not knocking anything about your, your aptitude and, you know what I'm saying, in terms of your intelligence. But here's what I am saying. Everybody gets to a point where there's a limit on how much we know. You see, the greatest enemy in life is not the devil. The greatest enemy in life, life is not another person. The greatest enemy in life to you and to me is ignorance. Is ignorance. You see, we are successful or not successful up to the level of your awareness. And so based off of your level of awareness will, will, will determine what it is you have access to and what it is that you can do. Think about this. Ever since the beginning of time, beginning of mankind, the knowledge of how to fly from earth to space was always and always was there. It's always was there. The knowledge, the mathematical formulation that to everything was there. But here was the problem. Man or women was not aware of how to do it yet. They weren't aware of the technology needed. They weren't aware of all the different laws that needed to get them there. But until we kept walking life out, until we began to continuously, God began to open up and to illuminate our minds. God is our light. The Lord is our light. Until God began to give us the light to, oh, wow, that's an idea. Let me do this. Until we was being able to be saved from our old thinking to our new thinking, just the comfortable ways of living life to the new ways where we're now uncomfortable and we're willing to grow and be challenged. It wasn't until that that we became aware. And we get a chance to exercise what it is that we need to. And we get a chance to experience some experiences we never had. So it says, the Lord is my light. Is the Lord your light today? Is God illuminating your mind? Are you going to God for the things that you don't know and going to God for the things that you do know but getting confirmation? Is the Lord your salvation? Do you realize that, hey, do you need to be saved today? Do you need to be saved from old thinking, from stinking thinking? Do you need to be saved from yourself? self-sabotaging yourself. Do you need to be saved from that? Do you be, need to be saved from the fact that you know what? You realize you take one step forward and two steps back? Do you need to be saved from the decisions you're gonna make forward? You're saying, wait a minute, I'm about to go into business or a new relationship or whatever it may be. And I just wanna know, is this the right one? Do you need to be saved from that? Sometimes we need somebody to rescue us. And that's what David is saying here. The Lord is my light. I'm dependent on God to illuminate my mind. I'm dependent on God to give me, to, to, to go before me because I can't really see. I can't really see everything. And my strength and my power is made in my weakness. Not in just the strength of who I am and what I know. It's in the very fact that I can, I can reach out and ask for support. And that's where my strength comes. And then it says this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? So watch this. Because the Lord is my light. Because the Lord is the light that doesn't grow dim. Because the Lord is the one that already went before me. The, because the Lord is the landlord that already owns the place, that knows the place, that knows everything. That hey, If there's a problem in your unit and there's a problem, you call the landlord. And guess what? You already, you're confident that the landlord will answer. You're confident that the management company will send repairs. You're confident that they'll replace it. That if there's something wrong with the infrastructure, they'll move you from one place to the other other that the Lord has the ability the capacity the desire to get you in a place where you're enjoying their place God is the same thing the Bible says in Matthew 24 it says the earth is the Lord's the fullness thereof everything and everyone belongs to him the earth is the Lord's the fullness thereof you see ladies and gentlemen the Lord Jesus Christ he owns the earth and it belongs to him he belong it belongs to him so he knows every nook and cranny everything about it 
And so we got an issue. Who do we go to? Do we go to Ray Ray and Pookie and them? Do we go to Mr. Johnson or Mr. Smith? Do we just go to them? Or do we go to the Lord? Do we go to the Lord in prayer and say, God, what have you said about this? What have you inspired somebody in terms of wisdom and knowledge about this? And what do I need to do? And so we do the same thing in our place, in our unit. If we're renting, if we're renting a home, renting an apartment, whatever it may be, a condo, it doesn't matter. We go to the landlord and we get the answers we need. Okay, we go to it and we get what we need. John, this is a sermon because at the end of the day, this is my inspirational talk. Every day I decide to come on and I'm going to always give a message. There's going to be some messages that's going to speak just for principles and motivation. And there's going to be some principles that speak to the spirit. Because inspiration is this. Inspiration is igniting the spirit on the inside of you igniting you to move and so therefore i understand that there is no separation between body and spirit we are all spirit and i gotta speak to that spirit man on the inside and i know there's a lot of people walking around just with head knowledge but i understand this from my experience that i'm going to speak to the inside of you so that you can change from the inside so you can grab hold to something that you need and it can change on the outside and so i understand that and that's what i'm going to give you and that's what i'm committed to continuously doing for everybody if, as you reach out. And so again, so again, it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? Whom should I dread? So that means I don't have to fear. You don't have to fear what comes up next. You don't have to fear what you hear on the news. You don't have to fear what you hear and what you read in the paper. You don't have to fear what you hear on your job. You don't have to fear this. You don't have that false evidence appearing real. You don't have to have that thought come in. The thoughts will come, but you don't have to lock in and hold it into your life. You can actually say, you know what? I cast that down. Everything will work out for my good. This too shall pass. And everything, I'm more than a conqueror. And so that's what you do. So the fact that the Lord is your strength and he is your salvation, you don't have to fear nothing. You can walk around with your head up high, head up high, looking into the Lord, knowing that God, you know what I'm saying? If you're before me, you're more than anything against me. That's the confidence we need. When I played 10 years in the NFL, before I ever stepped on the field, before I stepped in between those lines, I said, Holy Spirit, order my footsteps. You see, I was on a mission. And I felt that the harder I played, the more I was thanking God for the gifts he gave me. I felt that the harder I hit somebody, the more I was being grateful for the talents that I had, that God gave me. You see, my life is a living worship. My life is a living message. My life is a living letter, read of every man. Your life is a living message. Your life is a li living me uh, a video. It's a recording. What are people reading? What are people watching of your life? Yes, am I passionate? Yes, I'm passionate about this. I'm passionate about men, women, children, boys and girls living up to the light, living up to the level of your potential. I'm passionate about that. I'm tired of people being held back by their past mistakes. I'm tired of people walking around allowing somebody else, somebody else's opinion of them to define them. I'm tired of that. And I'm tired of you allowing yourself to live a defeated life. Today's the day. May the Lord be your light. May he be your salvation. May what God says about you be the defining moment and a definition and declaration of who you are, what you're here to do, what you can do, and where you're going. This is what we need. This is the passion we need. This is the authenticity that we need. This is the power and, the, and, and this is the power that we need in our life to move forward. That inspiration that comes from not from arrogance, but from confidence. What is confidence? It is me believing in myself. It's you believing in yourself and who God says you are, who your designer says you are. You see, if somebody is not happy with you because you take a stand, guess what? It says more about them than it does about you. It says more about them than it does about you. I know who I am and I want to walk with you as we walk this thing out. And so it says, the Lord is my refuge and my stronghold in my life. See, a stronghold is basically something, if you go back in times when they had all these wars back in the day, like medieval times, strongholds were those things where it was like a high mountain that they basically set up camp there. And when they set up camp there, because back then they didn't have boogies and they had cars and trains and airplanes, they had to walk there. And so if you were on the top of a mountain in a stronghold, you can actually see the enemy coming. And so the Bible saying, that, so it's basically saying the Lord is my stronghold. That means that God is above everything and he sees what's coming your way. He's coming your way. See, we may be down on the ground. You ever been in a, a, a parade and in the parade, the parade is riding by you. And it seems like the noises are really, really loud. You look to the left, you look to the right. And it seems like the parade never ends. It's loud, it's forever. But if you look at that parade from a stronghold, if you look at the parade from a blimp, if you look at the parade from 10,000, 30,000 feet up, you'll see that the parade is really so small. That there's a beginning to the parade and there's an end to the parade. 
And so the very fact that you can build confidence that, wait a minute, the person on the ground don't know that this parade is not that long. The person on the ground may not know that this thing is actually moving and that this is a season of their life. But the person that has the stronghold perspective, the person who sees it from a different position can understand that, wait a minute, it's only small. All I got to do is bear along. How about knowing that the Lord, your comforter, your guide, though your, though your designer, your maker, says, I'm your stronghold. I'm the one that's watching out for you. Yeah, I know that thing may have come to your way and you're not happy about it and it doesn't bring you joy and it may bring feelings of pain or hurt or loss. I understand that. The Lord is saying, I understand that, but I'm your stronghold. I also see you in the storm and I also see you coming out the storm. See, that's the power of the Lord being your stronghold. And the last thing it says, the Lord is my refuge and my stronghold in my life. Who or what shall I be afraid of? As you walk out your day today, may you walk in confidence. I say to you, let this be the day that you declare the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my stronghold. Listen, you have the right to be your own stronghold, okay? You have the right to be your own strength. You have the right to be your own Lord. You have the right to do all of it. I'll never tell you what to do. I'll never tell you what to say. I'll never tell you what to believe. I'll never tell you what to think, but I'm going to give you a perspective. But for all those that believe, may today be the day that you walk in total confidence that the one that went before me owns it all. The landlord knows everything about his building. He or she has the ability to do whatever they want. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. Everything and everybody belongs to God. We're managers here. We're stewards here. We're ambassadors here. Okay, we're children of God here. We're kings and queens, individual and authority here. Now, I want you to walk out your authority today. You got the keys to your, to your unit. You got the keys to your, to your life. You got the keys. Now, go in and open up the doors that are there for you. Open it up. Live it up. Live life to the fullest. Just know that God ain't mad at you. God is not disappointed with you. God loves you. The Lord gave it to you. Gave you to manage it. Gave you the ability to manage it. Gave you the keys to it. Now it's time to live it out. Walk it out with faith. Walk it out in confidence. Walk it out in strength. Today's message was exactly for you. Today's message, I believe, spoke to the inner person on the inside. And my desire and my hope and prayer is that it stirred up something. It stirred up something for you to grow in your faith. For you to grow in your relationship for you to grow in your life here on this earth. Listen, man, you be encouraged today. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. I want to thank you guys for the response, for the comments. Remember, if you're liking this message, don't forget to subscribe to the different pages that I have on Facebook so you'll get different information. So you got the Donovan Darius Next Level Training for sports, for camps, for health, for wellness, okay, for diet, for nutrition, for all those tips. Dar Donovan Darius Next Level Training. Like and follow that page. I also got the All Pro Motivation page that is specifically for these videos and motivational quotes. Remember, I have a quote book coming out and all all those things are going to be on there as well. Don't forget the Donovan Dare's public page, okay? This is the personal one, right? And I send things out from here, okay? And so the public page, and we're moving a lot of stuff over to those specific pages so people can get what they want, get what they need when they need it, all right? And don't forget on YouTube, I put a lot of these videos up there, so definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Listen, you guys have a great day today. As you sign off, uh, if this message spoke to you, do me a favor, in the comment section, just type just a word or something on how it spoke to you. What did it help you with today? What did today's message help you with today? How did it help you grow? It's all about growth, man. It's all about growing. It's all about next level, man. We keep growing. We keep growing. We keep growing. All right, listen. I love you guys. Have a wonderful day. Have an awesome day. Forget, don't forget to share this message with other people, you know what I'm saying, who you feel may be blessed by it as well. All right? Y'all have a great day today. Peace out.